That gets my goat. Hey, folks, this is Rochelle Field. And this is Big Anklevich. <laughs> We're running out of time. We're going to have to talk quickly. So the Avengers came. It, it hasn't went yet. That's right. It's still coming and coming and coming. Stop it. Just think what this is like for me, uh, winning the Mr. Universe seven times. That sounded like Schwarzenegger doing Christopher Walken impersonation. <laughs> I'd be damned if I'd let some greasy yellow person get their hands on my son. I can't even do it. My birthright. Yeah, I'm not very good. Uh, how much did you like the movie? I'll have to say I liked it a significant amount. I I was thinking about that before, and I can't remember the last time that I went to a movie and came out as excited and as just pumped up and like I'd had a lot of fun while this was going on. Just had a really great time. And I went into it with high expectations, and the expectations were all exceeded. It was an experience, a movie experience, where I didn't come out thinking, oh, if they just there was this or maybe that or I, that didn't happen for me and i can't remember the last time that was maybe it was the dark knight but the dark knight was a different kind of a movie you didn't come out smiling it was a good movie it was really impressive but you didn't come out going oh wow that was fun it was kind of a downer in general and so it wasn't the same kind of a thing so i don't know Maybe the last time I came out of a movie as excited about was probably when I saw X-Men 2. And that, I, I'll have to re-examine. I've only seen The Avengers once so far. Although I will be seeing it a second time soon. That one may dethrone my favorite comic book movie of all time, which is X-Men 2. Well, see, I had the same struggles with, you know, having high expectations that we talked about in the episode before. And I went to a public place before we went. We already had tickets. And there was a guy there who had already seen it. And everybody wanted to know his opinion. And I didn't. I don't care what this guy, you know, he's a guy I don't know. And you're going to it anyway. And I'm going to it anyway. I just it like, shut it up great. about it. And they said, well, what did you think? What? And he says, well, I went with a great big group. And they all seemed to think it was really good. And they're like, well, what about you? And he's like, eh, I don't know. It's not my thing. <laughs> and I thought, wow, okay. That's actually kind of good to hear that because the buzz had been so positive and you know the, the, there had been reviews and stuff early it wasn't one of those movies that the studio was afraid right about and so they had withheld it to the last possible minute but we spent a whole episode talking about our expectations and they were exceeded for me too because what i said in that episode was i wanted there to be moments where you just talked about afterwards like oh oh gee and i and then i i wanted to be surprised and I wanted to be moved. And I got all those things. What I didn't expect was that every single one of these characters would be so well served. Yeah. Because I, I'm a big Star Trek fan. I've seen every Star Trek movie in the theaters, except for Final Frontier. I don't know what happened there. I think that's the one from those days that I actually... That was the one that James T. Kirk directed, right? Yes. And they go to Planet Eden or whatever. That's one of the ones that I actually saw in the theater. How about that? I beat you at your own game. Okay, I guess. <laughs> you you saw that one and the 2009 Star Trek and none of the others. So I guess you I did saw win. Insurrection. Come on, that but was the greatest. Stop. Here's the, here's the point I'm trying to make. As I've been watching these Star Trek movies my whole life. And there's always somebody that just gets left out in the cold. Somebody that had nothing to do. Somebody who's got 10 lines and three of them are I, Captain. You know what I mean? Like Dr. Crusher never had anything to do in any of the Next Generation movies kind of thing. She was one of my favorites too. And it's just because there's such a vast number of characters and the priority is always going to be the Captain and Data or the Captain and Spock. And, and they might throw a bone to one of these other guys. Every time there's a movie with a big ensemble, that's going to happen. And I don't know what Joss did, but he made sure every single one of these characters had a funny line, had an action moment, had a character arc where they started in one place and went to another. All of them did. Dude, that to me is the greatest 
achievement of this movie beyond just the fun and beyond just, you know, the, the action sequences where you could tell who was <laughs> fighting whom and where everybody was and what was going on. And they were shot in a way that you could follow the action. There was one like one minute take that showed where everybody was. And the camera would continue to fly through New York to see the next guy, to see the next guy. That takes real talent. Yeah, those are cool moments. I remember Joss did that with the opening of the movie Serenity, where they just did this endless one-shot thing. And I think, and I was saying, yeah, the reason why they did this as one take is so they could just say, hey, look, everybody, we built the whole set. (laughs) <laughs> Look, no longer does it like the TV show where the ship isn't even one set. You have to go to this set for this. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, they did the entire opening sequence where they went all the way through the ship and walked. Cool stuff when they do that. And that's work. Nobody wants to do that. You know, if you can do 27 pickups in a day because you're going to shuffle them through like cheddar cheese, then do it. You know, that's what the consensus seems to be. But to spend an entire day on one shot or something like that. It, Do you uh, shuffle cheddar cheese? Is that a thing? <laughs> well, see, I have some sexual <laughs> proclivities that I had moments of genuine feeling for all of these characters. And Hawkeye, who was essentially new to this movie, had as much to do as Captain America. Yeah, that's one of the things that I was really amazed about. I mean, you expected Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. You expected those three probably to be the main characters, and then the rest are secondary. I mean, that's even the way it was in comic books, you know? You had the Avengers, and, you know, you have the main ones, and they're getting something going on every episode. And then you get that with TV series and stuff like that, too, where here and there, it's, okay, this is the episode about... This side character, he he gets his one episode this season. And that's why we like television so much. Yeah, because because all these guys get served and everybody gets time in the spotlight. Yeah, movies, you can't do that. So you pick who's the main characters and then they're the ones that get the art. He did it with everybody, even down to Nick Fury, who is not even a part of the Avengers. He's the guy that kind of got them together and... He's been a side character in several other or just made cameo appearances in several other movies. Now, they gave him things to do. He had an enemy to fight, even though he wasn't even down there fighting these, what were they called, Chitaris? I believe they were Chitaris. He he wasn't even there. He was on the helicarrier miles away, yet he had to fight the spy council or whatever they were. I don't remember what they were called. He had to stand up to them. He had to run out on the deck with a friggin' bazooka to shoot the jet down. Even he had something to fight. And he was not an important character. If you wanted to say somebody got underserved, maybe a Maria Hill got underserved. But she was not a character. She I was expected a, her to be a cameo, really. Yeah. She got more than I thought she would get. She had a lot of lines. And she was there for you know more than just to be somebody that was standing beside another person in the... What was the game that that one guy was playing? Galaga. Galaga. That was so <laughs> friggin' funny. I thought that was so cool. And you know, the characters you expected to have nothing to do. You know, the ones that aren't powerful. You got Hawkeye. You got uh, Black Widow. They they don't have powers aside from being good shots or being good with martial arts or whatever. They got nothing. And yet they seemed as important to the team as the other guys did. They seemed just as necessary. You know, Hawkeye is just a dude with a bow and some arrows. He seems like just the, che- the cheesiest, the least worthwhile. It's like, yeah, Robin Hood's day is past, man. Using a bow is not a handy thing to do in modern warfare. Yet they made this guy kick ass. He was awesome. It may, you know, they, they even called him Legolas at one point in the movie. And he totally, you know, you see Legolas doing crazy crap in the Lord of the Rings movies. And he was awesome. He was tough. He kicked butt. And Hawkeye was just as good. And he got some really cool stuff to do. Some really great stuff. When he shoots that arrow at Loki at the end. And Loki catches it. And he's just like, <laughs> I'm a god. And boom, the thing blows up right on him. Knocks him off of his little chariot. Just great stuff. And that's what I was talking about. Every character got something like that. And that takes work, man. I 
complain about the writers who say that it's easy, that they do that, that it just flows and all that. But no, you have to sit down and say, here is where Nick Fury begins and here's his darkest point and here is where he ends up. And let's make sure that that's strong and there's a through line and all that stuff. That doesn't just happen. Right. And to say, we have nine characters or whatever, and all of them are going to get something. That is a monumental achievement. And it's all Joss Whedon, dude. And I, 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 maybe I give him too much credit the same way that I give Stan Lee too much credit for creating all of this universe and all that stuff. But we've seen him do it on Firefly. We've seen him do it on Buffy it, or, you know, with just all these characters and you love them all. Yeah. And they all have stuff going on. Wow. He does that better than anybody else. And it would have been so easy to have Nick Fury and Black Widow and, and Hawkeye be the and the rest characters right. from the theme song of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> but he didn't do it. And there, when they announced that Scarlett Johansson was taking over the part of Black Widow from Emily Blunt, I was so bummed because Emily Blunt is an actress and Scarlett Johansson is, an I guess, a, a, movie, a movie star or, or you know, <laughs> whatever the other thing is. And they gave all sorts of crap about that leading up to this movie, too. Like you were talking about that comic that you saw on Facebook or whatever, where they're like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry, Black Widow, but I really don't see any use for you on this team. I mean, we got a god, we got a super soldier, we got a guy in a suit of armor that's like can blow things up. And, you know, we, we got a Hulk we really don't need. And she's like, wait, but when I jump in the air, I come down and I land like this. And he goes, oh. Oh, I think I can see the use for you. That's a legitimate argument, a legitimate criticism. Right. And Joss, I'm, I'm laying it at his feet. He made her look great. And he made her seem smart and seem like a good actress, well-written. There wasn't a single line delivery that felt lazy or any of that stuff. And maybe I'm hypercritical because I don't like Scarlett Johansson, but I liked her in The Avengers. You know, I remember when they cast her in, in Iron Man 2 and it's just like, Natasha is Russian. She can't even do a rush. She's doing an American accent or whatever. And the first time we see her in this movie, she's speaking Russian. Yeah. That. It's like they, they he saw what was wrong and he's like, well, I'm going to address that. You know, you people that said that she was wrong for the part, I'm going to put you in your place or whatever. She was great. Yeah. And they gave her like all the emotional stuff that's that's hard to play. But but is human that makes you connect to the character and that and I you cannot overplay the importance of that of connecting with these characters on an emotional level. You know, I'm 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 an old guy, like I always keep telling you, I don't care about the explosions or whatever, but I care about the people in the explosions. He made dang sure that we cared about all of them. And Loki there were there were moments when he was so insanely evil that it was just like there, you know this big Joker smile appears on his face or whatever, and but there were a couple of moments when he was vulnerable too, and 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 that that moment when Thor has grabbed him and says come back with me, and that I was just like holy cow they've given him depth of character as well, and he's not just a silly cartoon bad guy. I don't know. I I hope that nobody out there is discounting these aspects of the movie. I hope that all of them are taking note for their own movies or whatever and saying, we got to build on that. Because if you remember when Dark Knight came out, every studio or whatever said, we got to make our movies darker. And that's not why Dark Knight worked so well. You know what I mean? It's, it's, right. it's Please don't think we got to have a huge cast of characters in our movie that's what worked for avengers you know don't yeah. don't take the don't wrong be lesson like, hey we need five superheroes not just one we need extra villains like on spider-man 3 that worked well <laughs> One of the things that I really loved about the movies, you know, we love Joss Whedon. There's no secret to that. And you could see him all over the place in this movie. Just the stuff that we love about Joss Whedon from other things. Yeah, there's just always witty comments, great little lines, and even sequences that, you know, like some of the just kick-ass sequences, you know. Like the reason why I loved Firefly, I was slouching back in the couch and then you get to the moment where in, in the first episode of, of Firefly Serenity, the two-hour pilot, you get to the moment where Mal arrives back 
and the federal agent guy's got his gun out and he's got the whole crew there at, at his mercy mal walks in bam shoots him dead <laughs> and, and then it's go, go and on and all his... of a sudden i go from slouching to whoa sitting up straight that was awesome oh my gosh this is great those kind of moments you know it's the same kind of thing as you know we've talked about in uh, astonishing x-men where the bad guy is trying to get them and we've already had the one time where he's trying to get them and then the, the dragon blows fire in his face and then uh, there's a, a later moment where he's standing there and he's he's got them all at his mercy and then he goes uh that dragon's behind me again isn't it and he turns around and no it's not the dragon it's now colossus and he just pounds the crap out of him and you know the mo- one of the great moments and the moment that i heard somebody coming out of the theater as i was waiting for you to show up somebody comes out of the theater and they said oh you know what my favorite part was is that part where loki goes i am a god you people are beneath me and then hulk just grabs him and just hammers him into the floor 15 times until he's just sitting there he's not even able to groan or anything he's just like barely able to blink he's been so beat down it's just such a great moment. And I've seen more than one people in their reviews say, this moment alone is worth going to see the movie for. So wonderful. That's what Joss Whedon brings. And it's just too bad that we've had to wait so long for this. For him to be given this chance, I hope his time has come now. And he's just going to go from here into whatever he wants to do. That gets my goat. We'll be continued next time. Run while you still can. <laughs> That really pisses me off, or that gets my goat, or whatever this is ultimately called, is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative license. Fifty, there's still time to choose. Time to win and time to lose your butt virginity. If you will just wait for me. <clears throat> Oh, I got the Avengers soundtrack. Yeah, it's not too shabby. I kind of like it. I, the second time, I actually found myself humming the main Avengers theme. I can't remember it now, right. but when it was over, I mean, it's so simplistic. It's like four notes or something like that. But I was doing it on the ri- on the drive home, and so that's good. That doesn't yeah. happen too often, and. I noticed that scene on the, the helicarrier when they played the cap theme again. And there's another part really... where they play it. I was listening oh, yeah, to they, it. And, and the it part where up. he jumps and rolls and the, the, the aliens are trying to get him and he becomes CG for a second and then he becomes him again. They play the cap theme there too. There's a part early on too that he played. I can't remember what it was, but it, just, it, it may have been the part where he's making them all kneel or whatever. And then he comes in and says, the last time I was in Germany may have been right there that it made the song i don't remember for sure i'd have to listen to it. i've only listened to it like two or three times so far so the whole soundtrack you've listened to two or three times right how are you just not listening to audiobooks anymore on your drive well i got it saturday night and i just listened to it once when i was going to sleep sunday night and then i listened to it a couple times i did listen to it on my drive to work I haven't picked a new audiobook to listen to, but I also have music at work, so I just had it playing. Okay. I, I made a playlist that had Avengers, and then I put Captain America and Thor and uh, Iron Man all into one playlist and had them play through. But the only ones that go together really are the Avengers and Captain America because they're done by the same composer. Makes me kind of sad. I wish. And they know. Well, I mean, I re- I watched the credits, and they don't have snippets from the thor right. score or the iron man score mm-hmm. which is a shame yeah i wish they would I uh, wish. there shouldn't be any legal problems with that yeah it's all released by the same folks so they should be able to and maybe it's just the com- other composers like eh, i don't want to use their score might be but it's a shame like when thor finally shows up amid the lightning or whatever if there was a thor a thor theme that's there when is. we wanted to hear it and it's a pretty good one to tell you the truth. And, you know, we hear the ACDC song, <laughs> and that's practically the Iron Man theme because they did away with the Iron Man theme in Iron Man 2. But still, it's a sort of – I, I mean, like I, it's something to... we talk about all the time. It's just – it's neat. Yeah. I'm sure Hulk had a theme too because unless these guys are completely incompetent, you tend to repeat certain groups of right. notes and all that throughout the movie to create a feeling of familiarity. To yeah. Go, 
I'm sure he had. A th- I don't know what it is because I've never listened to the soundtrack of Incredible Hulk. But I know that they, for some reason, they didn't like that. And you were saying it was just the Macarena played differently or something. Mm-hmm. But dun, 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 and I, I, I thought that was fine. I thought it worked great. There was something industrial and yeah, they they should have uh, still used it. I mean that that's one of the coolest things about it is it's a sequel to all these other movies. And it would be cool to bring that together with the music as well as with other stuff. I don't know how it actually works. If you technically need to get the permission from these guys, like okay, there's that one moment in Avengers where you see a picture of Natalie Portman, <laughs> right? Um, I'm assuming she gets paid nothing for that. But do they have to ask her permission? I don't know. You know what I mean? She Yeah. <laughs> the moment where he goes through and explains and then I turn to you and said, in other words, she won't be appearing in this film. Which is fine, <laughs> though. I mean, it, at least they it, explained it. Yeah, I like that they explained it. It was fine, but it kind of wasn't. I guess they're saving that for Thor, too. But it's just kind of like Thor was trapped off world. And the one thing that he cared about left on this earth was Jane Foster. And he comes back to this world and he just doesn't see, oh, yeah, she's safe. No, don't worry. She's safe. That's all you need to know. (laughs) I guess. But it's still better than Anakin Skywalker's mom, where it's just like, yeah, we won't think about her for 10 years. And and there is a possibility that Joss's people called her people or whatever. And she's like, I'm tied up. I'm doing other stuff. I'm pregnant now or whatever it is. And they're like, shoot, we can't get her. Well, let's at least throw her character a bone in this one scene. It is better at least than Batman Returns, where it's like, I thought you were going out with Vicky Vale. Nah, it didn't work out. Oh, okay. Well, next. There's this other chick that's really hot, and she dresses as a cat. I bet she'd be worth... Yeah, that always made me feel a little cheated. Still the best of those movies. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you, but that always made me feel cheap. It's like, what you you got us to give a crap? Although I never really gave a crap about her, but she it, was hot, and yeah. that was the only reason to like that her because she was worthless. Do you remember? And she was one of those love interests that was like a detriment to <laughs> whenever she was around. She was a liability. You know, she was a Willie Scott kind of leading lady, where you just like, oh, Batman would be so much better off without her around just like you spend a whole movie making us think that she mattered (laughs) just to say ah it didn't work out i I caught her blowing the mailman yeah i don't know what to say about that i mean none of the batman movies before nolan came along had any continuity that way right and i i don't know if they were sort of mimicking the bond films um because it seems like most of these franchises want to mimic bond i mean and i understand why i mean it's the longest running most successful of all of those but uh there's something stronger like like we always say about harry potter or whatever the more things that carry along the the more invested you are and to introduce a new character you have to start from square one of who she is and why we like her and why our main character would like her and all that stuff and And so having Rachel Dawes come back or whatever, they probably had to start at square two because she's a new actress. Different person. (laughs) But just calling her Rachel and all that stuff told us, you know, that Bruce had this connection and that he loved her and, and, you know, all that stuff. So it worked so much better than any of the love interests we've ever seen before. Now, in this third movie, will they mention, you know, it's been eight years and I still think about Rachel Dawes or, you know, is it just something in the past and now there's a new love interest and who cares james bond one billion six hundred and eight million yeah i think harry potter has passed that as far as two billion three hundred ninety million but adjusted for inflation i mean lord of the rings one billion sixty million so uh one record that avengers hit that i mean it still means nothing but i thought was interesting was it was the biggest per theater average for a movie ever. Oh, that doesn't which mean nothing, opinions, I would say. Which, in my opinion, means more theaters were full. Right. But I would say that actually it means also, something for But once. it also co- means the tickets cost more. 